What's up everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to go through and show you how I made this New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers game day graphic. In under 30 minutes I'll take you through step by step process of how to go from nothing to this final finished product. Um, grab your own photos, open up Photoshop and follow along with me. Alright so now we're in Photoshop and you can see we have our reference image pasted into our working document. Um, if you didn't know you want to start off by going to file, new, and to make a social media size graphic, you're gonna come over here to your width, make that 1080, come to your height, make that 1350, and that is a um, Instagram size document that we're gonna be working on. Next things next, we're gonna try and recreate the layout. First thing we need to do is find the pictures that fit. So it's football season, I have chosen to turn this into a football game day graphic. I have my first picture of Aaron Rodgers here, second picture here, which is obviously going to be our background photo. So first thing I'm going to do is just pull this tab down, drag it into our working document, and then I can close those out. Now uh, this is probably the most important step. Come over here and right click on each of those layers and then convert to smart object convert to smart object. You can rename these if you want. I'm going to do action and I'm going to do close up. Try to keep my documents as organized as possible. But when you uh, create these smart objects, you change these layers of smart objects, it allows you to scale up, scale down, scale back up, add effects. Um, you are able to do everything you need to do to your photo without uh, losing any quality. All right, I have pasted our logo in here. I'm gonna go through and do the same thing once again. Um, right click, convert to smart object, New York Jets logo. Scale it down for now, um, but I really just want this to get our background color. So hit the shortcut key is I for the eyedropper tool. Or if you look over here on your toolbar, it's gonna be up here towards the top, eyedropper. And I'm just going to click on that shade of green. Come down to my layers and create a solid color. Up at the top. And now it should, it's going to pick uh, your foreground color over here. But since I have that green selected, it's already ready for me. Boom, we've got our background. Now looking at our reference, we need our action shot front and center, which is right here. Um, this is now a smart object. So if I double click it, it's going to take us back to the original photo. Now I want to show you a plugin that I use all the time called remove.bg for Adobe Photoshop. Um, great app I use to cut images out. Now I will go ahead and say it's probably going to struggle with um, the white against white in certain spots of this photo, but it should do a pretty good job um, and it'll uh, give me a starting point to where I don't have to cut the whole image out by hand. But this, this app saves me um, hours of time a week. Um, I'm cutting out so many photos every week and you can see it does a great job. I just have to clean up just a little bit and that's just because of the white on this photo. Um, our other photo it will cut out effortlessly. It'll be one click. Um, but if you are interested in getting this plugin, I have the link in the description below. Um, go ahead and get it. It's great. It's very affordable, very cheap. If you're gonna be making a lot of graphics it's gonna save you so much time on cutting stuff out. So go ahead and check it out and I'm gonna clean this up and we'll get to the next step. Okay, now we have our image masked out how we want it. Pretty clean cut, thanks to the Remove BG app. Saved me a ton of time. I just had to clean up a couple of small spots. Um, now check this next spot, uh, this next step out. It's probably a little different um, than what you've seen before, but this is how I'm going to get um, perfect shadows on our original graphic once we get to that step. But first thing we need to do is to come over here. Oops, don't do that. Come over here to our layers. We'll do cut out image. What I'm going to do is duplicate that using the shortcut key control J or you can right click and duplicate layer whichever is easiest. I use Control J. So I'm gonna move this below and I'm gonna change it to background image. 
now come over here make sure you click on this black and white part which is our mask which cut our image out I'm going to delete the layer mask so our full photo is now back now I'm going to go like we've done before and convert both of these to smart objects okay so now we have the full photo um, the cutout photos on top now I'm going to hold shift select both of these layers and I'm going to use the chain button right here to link these layers so now what happens is if you move any of these either of these layers they both move together I'm gonna pull this tab down and throw it into our working document you can close that and save it it doesn't matter um, we'll we'll keep it just for uh, in case we need to come back to our original for some reason but we should be fine now I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit hide the background image layer hide the action layer so now you can see I'm, I've got the cutout image on top if I move it and bring this back it's still in position so now let me show you how we use that background image to add our shadows so click your eyeball eyeball tool right here to bring it back make it visible now we're going to add an all black mask there's a couple different ways you can do this but come down here to your layer mask and I like to hold alt if you hold alt it's gonna make this mask black if you didn't know black um, erases and white um, adds on a layer mask so whatever's white is visible whatever's black is invisible um, you can always come over here and invert them using control I but I hold alt to create a black mask now come over here to our our colors make white your main color choose your paintbrush and then we're going to come up here to our paintbrush tool, uh, options click this little drop down menu flatten your brush make it just a little sliver hardness all the way down size you can just put somewhere around 100 is fine for this one um, flow is going to be down near 15 to 20 range somewhere around there so you can see I have a paintbrush, a small skinny paintbrush that I can now, that is white, that I can now use to one click at a time, bring back that grass on the ground. And what I want to do is do multiple clicks right up under his foot where the shadows would be the darkest. And then I want to slowly increase the size of the brush and just click once at a time to have it to give it that faded look to where it's really noticeable under his foot and then slowly fades away and there we go and I can see the shadow right there and we'll bring it all the way up a couple edges right here I'm going to switch the brush to black and erase that I want it to be smooth as possible so we bring it back there you go now it is green I don't think we want it to be green I like the grass look but uh, I want it to look more like shadows than it does right now so I'm gonna come down here to our adjustment layers we'll do hue saturation control alt G to do the clipping mask right here um, change the saturation we're gonna make it black and white come back down here to levels and on the levels um, we're going to adjust basically the brightness of this thing we want to make it darker I want it to look more like just a shadow so I can do that by pulling in this white uh, lever at the bottom and then I'm just going to play with the middle ones until I get it kind of the darkness I'm looking for I don't want it to be just pure black but something like that just a nice soft shadow I uh, actually want to add a little bit more of the grass so I'm going to duplicate the background layer here I'm going to delete the layer mask hold alt and get another brush and I just want to bring back just a little bit of the grass kind of like that uh, make sure that you don't have any of those edges showing like that very subtle 
erase the parts you don't like by using a black brush. Let me zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. You can see our shadow is this layer. You can still see the grass some. There's some black in there I don't like. And it's heavy up under his foot, it fades away. And I duplicated it to add um, just a little bit more grass and it's, it's still green. So there we have our main object. Let's actually darken that just a little bit. Something like that. So all I did was use a hue saturation, adjusted the lightness, and I darkened that grass just a little bit. I don't want it to be glowing on that dark green from the Jets colors. Okay, so next step we are going to try and recreate this um, head in the background. Now you do need to have the photos to make this work. Um, this is probably the best one that I found. It should work just fine. So I'm going to just scale it down just a little bit just for so I can kind of look at how we want it. Something like that is probably what we want. Now let's just cut it out. So remember we converted it to a smart object when we first started. To open it up, I'm going to double click on the icon in the layers panel. Now here's another great example. The remove BG should cut this one out perfect. Now the only place that it might have trouble might be on this shoulder right here, but sometimes it'll surprise you. Um, so I come over here to my plugins. This is my favorite part of this plugin is that I never have to leave Photoshop. Cool, all right. Worked almost perfect. Only spot I'm gonna clean up is right here is where I see. I'm gonna clean it up. Okay, thanks to our Remove BG, we've got our head cut out perfect. Now I need to <clears throat> make sure that this is in our, uh, applies, this change applies to our regular document. Um, if you make any changes to any smart object, you can just close it and make sure you save it. And boom, there it is, saved in our original document now. So we need to try and blend this part here. All this where the photo ends does not look good. So I'm going to come down here, create another mask. We're gonna do the same technique we had for the shadows. I'm gonna get black, brush, make sure the hardness is all the way down, get the size up to a decent size, and we want the flow to be somewhere around 15 to 20 is fine. And I want a pretty big brush on this because I want it to be a smooth um, transition. But I'm just going to click one at a time. Um, do not, it doesn't work quite as well if you don't click. It's, it's just not going to get as smooth of a look. But I'm going to click one at a time and just try and fade this out. Something like that. Now the good part about working on a mask and with smart objects is I can just switch the color to white and I can bring stuff back as needed. So I'm going to do something kind of like this, I think. I might shrink it a little bit. Just play with it. Um, depending on your photos, you're going to have a little bit different look. But the process uh, remains the same. And that looks pretty cool right there. Um, now I want to go through and add some effects to my player. Um, here's our main cutout image. I'm going to do that by coming up here to the top. Photoshop has the filters, and the filter we're going to work with is Camera Raw. It's going to pull up this pop-up window, and over here on the side we have all our settings. Now every photo is going to be different, so you can't just copy my settings but I'll kind of show you my process. So I always come over here and click the auto button and just see what it gives me. Sometimes it'll ruin it, sometimes it looks good. Now this one, in this case I like it, it brightens up the skin, brightens up the face, um, gives it a good look. I usually pull down the highlights, especially if they're wearing a white uniform. You don't want that white to be overpowering. I try to never have pure whites on my graphic. And then for sport design, I like to increase the texture a lot increase the texture um, and what it does is adds a lot of that like structure and um, definition gives it like a gritty tough 
feeling. Um, you can also play with your clarity. I use it both ways. Sometimes I pull it down, sometimes I pull it up. In this case, I want it to be really defined, um, gritty look, so I'm gonna add some more texture. And then I like to pull the dehaze down to brighten everything up. And sometimes I'll pull the blacks down a little bit. And that darkens your shadows up a little bit. So there's my settings on this. You can try it on yours um, and see what you get. But like I said, every photo is different. There's no set, no set formula for it. Um, that's just kind of my process. And then you just, yep. You can click on the eyeball. You can see there's the before, there's the after. Let's just click on OK. And we can zoom in. And there you have it. We've added some pretty cool effects pretty quickly to it. Um, you can come down here to your smart filters on your layers. I can actually click this eyeball and hide the effect. So you can see right there, really cool photo, kind of bright, um, kind of smooth. And then right here, toned down all the whites and added a lot of texture to it. Now one other thing that I want to add in Camera Raw, I can do that by just double clicking on it and it'll pull it back right back up where we were at. Same settings and everything. I'm gonna come down here to detail. I wanna add some sharpening. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna add some sharpening and if you didn't know the, the masking right here. Um, the masking, the higher up you pull it, the less areas it affects. So if you pull it up all the way, it's, effect, it's sharpening on those white areas only. So that's kind of what I want. I don't want the whole thing to be sharpened. I just want to focus on the edges of him. Bam. There we go. And I like the look of that. So now let's focus on our background image. I want to give it this effect. Um, it's got the colors. It's like faded into the background, same colors as the background. So let's see if we can get this thing green. A um, couple different ways you can do this. Um, it's gonna work different depending on your photos. It'll look a little bit different. But just playing with this one, I kind of thinking I wanna put it on multiply or, or color burn, not darken. Yeah, so we're gonna put it on multiply. Now, you can see, in this case, really dark, really dark, and doesn't have the same effect. So now, I'm gonna go back into Camera Raw, and I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna go through the same process I did with the original photo, but I'm gonna have in mind that I need to brighten this thing up a good bit for it to look good on that um, background. So I'm gonna click on Auto, don't like that. I'm leave it, I turn it off. I'm going to up the exposure quite a bit, and I'm going to pull down the blacks. Maybe up the shadows, up the texture, clarity probably all the way, to haze, something like that. Now, that looks pretty bad right now, but this is going to be trial and error until I get the look I'm going for, and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before with the sharpening, masking all the way up something like that and now let's just click OK and see where we stand okay so that got us a lot closer to where we need to be you can see there's the before really faded out really washed or really dark um, not the same look right here it's a little bit closer to where we need to be so we're gonna roll with that for now now let's add some of this lighting you can see it's a brighter orange slightly brighter orange on the middle and I think I'm going to use that to help bring this background photo out actually let's do this as well let's let's make this background photo black and white so hue saturation and what I did was um, I clipped it pulled the saturation all the way down and clipped it to the background so let's create a new layer above our color fill we're going to keep the same green that we have um, brush setting should be big brush hardness all the way down flow really low and I'm just going to brush directly behind our main action shot and inside of that head 
and I'm going to put it on linear dodge. I'm going to do one click at a time. And I'm going to, I'm kind of slowly expanding, just kind of seeing how it needs it. I'm going to make my light source the top right corner so the light's coming down this way so I can add some more light up in this corner. And there we go. So there's before, there's after. And that did a great job bringing that photo out how we want it to, to look um, similar to our reference image. Okay, now I have added some game day text and some detailed text to the bottom corners as well as the logo. I went with a different layout from the inspiration just because of the photos we were using are laid out different. Um, entirely up to you how you want to do it. But I think um, simpler fonts always work better, easier to read, easier. You, you're just not going to mess up using these classics. So this is the Helvetica font. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere. I think it might even come on your computer. But Adobe Fonts has it. And you can get the entire family. You can get the different weights. Um, but I have the layout here, and we are just about done. I'm going to just add some different things to add some lighting and some more detail to this. Let's spice it up just a little bit so it's not just Aaron Rodgers on a green um, background. Um, first thing I want to do is I'm going to make our background image pop out a little bit more. So come down here to my close-up. I duplicate it, and I'm going to pull it above um, the one that we had before put it on normal and I'm actually going to delete this layer mask hold alt and make a black one so I want to be able to see his eyeballs I'm going to get my brush over here get it smaller turn the hardness about halfway up flow at 50 is fine and what I'm going to do is just brush right here with a white brush take a look at it and see how it looks after we zoom out yeah we're gonna go something like that let's see how it looks if we do the teeth too okay that's not bad so I'm gonna also do a hue saturation above it. Control Alt G to clipping mask. And take the saturation off that as well. Let's do the teeth a little bit more. I don't want them being green. So just trying to add a little bit more to this graphic. Make it a little bit more unique. Alright, there we go. And cleaning up the edges okay there you go I've brought back his teeth and his eyes and this thing adds a little bit more to it I'm gonna make that I think I'm gonna actually make that green so what I'm gonna do use the eyedropper tool and get this green from the background Go to Hue Saturation, Colorize, and there we go. So I'm going to pull that down and Control Alt G it to where it's only on this eyeball layer. Now it's not going to really affect the white, so I can come up here and mess with these settings and try and get something. I want it to be a obnoxiously bright green. zoom out and see how that looks that looks pretty cool okay now let's add a little bit of texture I'm gonna look through my stock images see what I can find to try on here okay I've got all kinds of different things that I can try and add um, to get a little bit more going on in this graphic and I think I'm gonna get some of this plastic packing I like this one so let's drag this plastic stock over the top of it I've got it on the very top oops let's convert it to a smart object and expand a little bit to where these highlights are on the seams yeah that's pretty cool right there 
move it around however you want and let's play with our blending there we go see now we're talking that's pretty cool see that adds a lot of contrast let's see what else we got you can just scroll through these and find what you like the most I'm probably gonna go with this multiply because I like the the contrast it gives and I can actually duplicate it try it on one of these there we go and that's going to amplify the look we're getting even more i'm going to hide certain parts of it it's a little too bright so i'm going to actually just create a layer mask get black hardness low flow low i'm going to brush away some of the parts that i don't really like okay so we've added a little bit more to our graphic but it has definitely um, darkened it up a little bit. So I'm going to add some general lighting to this thing by coming down here to exposure. And I'm going to pull the gamma correction up just a slightly bit. And then I'm going to hide it for now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come to exposure. I'm going to turn the exposure up just a slight bit. And then I'm going to hide it. So now this lighting, remember we have our lighting sources up here, top right. And I have a brush, white brush. I'm gonna darken all the bottom left-hand side of this thing. Something like that. Now this one exposures our light and I'm gonna brighten up all of this part of it. So we'll come put this in a folder so you can see before and after. It's going to be subtle, but it really helps add some more depth to that thing. So that here's before, after, before, after. Okay, now one more step and we are going to get out of here. So game day here, I'm going to add a scribble line. I like to add scribble lines. So there's all kinds of marker elements you can get. I've got a pack that I got off of somebody on Instagram, but you can get them from Envato, Google, just Google marker, PNG. You can make your own. You can just scribble on a sheet of paper and then take a picture. But these are from a pack that I bought. Uh, I don't want it black. I'm gonna come to FX color overlay let's make it white and let's resize I want it to be skinnier than that you can come up here and take the chain off okay now we are on the final step let's come up here to our top layer create a new layer and we're gonna come up here to image apply image okay so now what we have is our finished product all of it is on one layer where we can see our entire finished product right here. I'm gonna convert it to a smart object, filter, camera raw. Now what I wanna do is add a little bit of sharpening. I usually sharpen everything at the end. Maybe put the masking up a good bit, sharpening up a little bit more. Just look at it and see it's personal preference what you think. And then I want to add some effects, some grain. I like the look of some grain. Um, makes it kind of, just gives it like a gritty look. And vignette, which is gonna darken our corners just a little bit. Don't overdo this. You can always brush it better than you can using vignette. Bam. Before, after, before, after. And there you have it. That's how to make a simple game day graphic. There you have it guys that's how you can create your own game day graphic find me on instagram send me your finished products if you follow this tutorial using your own photos i'd love to see them uh, if you are ever looking for any photoshop templates i have team template packs i have social media graphics all types of things on my website basportdesigns.com and if you like this video please like and subscribe and i'd love it if you guys would comment um, 
on this video below on some things that you'd like to see in upcoming videos. Send me some ideas and I'll make sure and make it happen. See you.